Hi everyone, so today we're just going to take a look at how we can use this new UI Vision uh, RPA product to record and uh, do a simple test. So to get this working, first go to UI Vision uh, website as you can see here. And if you're using the Chrome browser, just do a one-click install. Um, which brings you to the web store and then from the web store once you install that product you'll get this little icon here Okay, so for today's video what we're going to do is we're going to take use use UI vision to record a Simple script to run a speed test and to capture the upload and the download speeds So to start I go to the website where I want to record Okay, so now I have uh, speed test open. Okay, so this is the website that I want to record. And once I'm there and I'm ready to record, I launch UI Vision. And you can see UI Vision now. Um, it, on this side, you can see UI Vision. And you can see that UI Vision starts with a demo folder containing some demo scripts. Uh, but what I want to do is create a new folder for my own uh, automation. Okay. Um, so I'll create that okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what we call a macro yeah so I'm going to call this my uh, speed test macro okay I'm going to click confirm all right so now I'm going to have a speed test macro and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click record and you can see that it captures this browser that I have okay and then of course the first step that I'm going to do here is to click go And it's going to run a speed test. So this is the speed that we get from my home in Australia. And this is the upload speed that I'm getting from my home. Okay, so once the test has finished running, um, what I want to do now is to actually um, stop the recording because that's all I'm going to do, right? So I have these two steps. It will open the browser. It will click on the um, uh, speed test to run the test and it comes back with this information. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new step now, which is to capture up this data okay so, um, so I'm gonna click that I'm gonna click add and then my step command to actually capture the data from the web page is called store text um, and I need to tell um, UI vision which field I want it to capture the text from so but for to do that I click on select um, and I come to this browser okay and this is the field I click on that all right and you can see now the X path is populated um, I need to give it a variable to store that information download speed call it download speed all right okay and of course then I want to capture the upload speed as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click add um, and I'm going to use store text again and select okay this is the field alright and I'm going to keep it in upload speed okay the variable that I'm going to store that data is upload speed okay so now I have a simple script here that will open up the browser here and then it will click on the go it will then keep capture the two data okay so let me save that script right now and let's play the macro okay so you can see now um, oh you can see what happened here is that the macro completed before the test was even um, completed so naturally if I go into the variables I can expect that the download speed and the upload speed would have nothing because the field is here but it has got no data when it ran so what we need to do is to um, have the script 
wait a bit before it captures, uh, before it proceeds uh, to capture the data. Okay, and if I look at the screen here, um, you can see that once I, my test is finished, or my 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 uh, speed test has finished. Um, you can see some additional information here like connections, um, Vodafone, change server, Vodafone. Um, now this Vodafone I know it's something that can change because when I run the test every time um, the speed test website could choose a different location to test. So I need to find um, an element on the screen that doesn't really change and chances are this change server will not change so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a wait step after I click this button uh, I'm going to add a wait step to wait for this change server to appear before I capture these two pieces of information alright to do that I click on I go to my click step here and I click on an add step alright so now I have an add step here additional step uh, and the command to wait for something to appear is called wait for element visible okay wait for element visible so I click on wait for element visible and which element am I gonna wait for so let me select and come here this is the element change server so I'm gonna click on that so you can see now uh, target is link text equals to change server so what's gonna happen is um, uh, when we replay the script uh, UI vision is gonna click the button but when it comes to this point it's just gonna wait for this to appear okay so let's save the script and let's try it again okay so you can see now it's actually standing here waiting but it's only gonna wait for 10 seconds as you can see the bracket 10 and it encountered some error okay obviously um, I'm doing the right thing I'm waiting for this to appear uh, but unfortunately for me um, the test is gonna take more than 10 seconds and by default the wait for element um, command uh, is waiting for 10 seconds only so what I need to do is I need to go and change this um, wait for element uh, timeout period from 10 seconds to something that's a bit longer. Now uh, to do that, um, there is a command to do that. Let me just click on the plus here uh, and I'm going to set that value right before this wait for element. And to do that, so I need to use this command called store. Okay, uh, And store uh, will effectively um, help me um, override this uh, this um, uh, timeout command. So what I'm going to do is select this, and then I'm just going to wait for maybe 120 seconds instead of 10, or uh, maybe 60 seconds would be enough. Well, this was 90 seconds. Okay, and the variable that that uh, defines how long um, UI vision is going to wait is time out wait. Now you can get a lot of this information from uh, 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 the documentation. Uh, it's just because I've tried this before so I know what are the commands but if you want to find out what you can do you can actually click on this which can bring you to the uh, uh, documentation. I'll do another video just to cover that later. Okay so what I'm going to do now is I have a step here to set to increase the timeout to 90 seconds instead so and I'm gonna save the script now and I'm gonna run it again okay so you can see now can you see what happened um, now instead of 10 I have 90 there okay so now um, the script is just gonna run and it's gonna wait 90 seconds before uh, it's going to wait for this change server to appear uh, this link to appear and at the maximum it's going to wait for 90 seconds before it ends with an error so in this case 90 seconds is more than enough um, in fact we can make do with 60 seconds um, now that we see how long it actually took alright so now that you see now it's done okay so the macro has completed running 
um, and the way to check if our script works is to look if we uh, manage to capture the download and the upload speed so let me just scroll down here so there you go so now you can see download um, is 35.3 upload is 18.14 now let's just do that again um, but this time let's just change the timeout to maybe 60 seconds instead uh, save and let me play back row again Okay, and you can see now the script is running and you can see now it's waiting for 60 instead of 90. Okay, and you can see now the download speed, upload speed, it's just running. And yes, 60 seconds is good enough uh, for us to capture this. Okay, and you can see now I have 35 seconds download and upload 18.21. Alright, so there you go. So that's one script to do a speed test macro.